Last week I mentioned in the message that Jesus says, come to me, I will give you rest. He says, walk with me, take my yoke, take my burden and you will find rest. Come, I give it to you. You work with me, live with me and you will find the rest. And when you read that in the beginning, it's as though it seems like Jesus says, if you stay with me, you won't have the benefit of me giving you things but you will have things available to you that you on your own will begin to take. It's almost similar to the story of the father gave his inheritance to two sons and the youngest son, he was kind of bold one. He took all of the inheritance that belonged to him, ran into another country, squandered it with prostitutes, just, just went partying, gambled it at the casino. I mean, drink, did drugs, did just, just wasted it. And the older son, he kept it and he worked with the father. He carried the yoke, carried the burden. He learned from the father. He worked with the father and the younger son comes back and daddy takes the goat, slaughters the goat, prepares the goat for him the older son comes in and says dad you never gave me a goat and dad looks at him he says yeah of course I didn't because I gave you the full inheritance and I've been kind of watching looking when are you gonna get your own goat see it's good when you are a child your parents give you milk your mom not your parents but your mom gives you milk from her breast and that is awesome you don't have to do anything just ah boom you got milk right there but there comes a point where your mama stops giving you milk and if she continues to do that that is not good for you but she doesn't give you milk no more what she does is she puts food in the refrigerator and then you have to get up from your blessed assurance Jesus is mine couch and actually go to the refrigerator and take the food that she has available for you so what God is saying to us is that when you come to Jesus, He gives you a goat. But when you begin to stay with Jesus, He reveals to you of things that are available to you and it's up to you to begin to take them by faith. Yeah. The Bible says God feeds the birds of the air. I've never seen once a bird open the mouth and God from heaven sends food. How does God feed the birds of the air? He places food within their reach and he expects them to use their little legs that he gave them to move and to find that food. God wants you to know as a Christian, he makes things available and that's why we come to church to know what is available to me in Jesus. Holy Spirit wants to let you know what is available to you. That you don't have to live sick. That you don't have to live broke. You don't have to live cursed. That you don't have to hear voices at night. Now you may not get all of that right away. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers him out of them all. It doesn't say out of them few, out of the major ones, out of the ones that the doctors can't help but the rest of them he has to suffer to learn the character. The Bible says the Lord delivers the righteous man out of all of his afflictions. It may not happen in one day. It may not happen at the same time. It may not all of them at the same time. It may not happen at the same way the Lord will deliver them. Sometimes He will deliver one affliction at here and other times He will deliver it when you read the Bible. But you must understand what's available to you is that every affliction you can have as a righteous person, God has the power to deliver you from. Sometimes this, this preacher who's called the Prince of Preachers, he had a nurse in his, in his church and this particular nurse took care of elderly people. She was very good at it and she was very kind to people, very nice to people. One particular person she was taking care of after he was already about to go into the other world and pass away. He said to her, he says, you've been very kind to me. You've been very good to me and I want to leave you something. He hands her a legal paper and says, I just wanted to give you this note and I just wanted to bless you. You've been so kind to me. And this particular lady, she feels very blessed by it. So she takes this paper, goes into um, a picture frame store and asks if they could put this paper into a picture frame. And she hangs that in front of her wall and she always carried that because that was like a special emotional connection to this person whom she helped for a long time in her life. She's on her own deathbed and Charles Spurgeon comes to her to minister to her and prepare her to meet the Lord. As he is there, he notices how poor she is and how difficult and challenging her life is. And his eyes gaze at the picture frame on, in that room. And he comes to the picture frame and he reads that this woman was given millions of dollars of estate from this wealthy man. 
because she took care of him he comes to her and he says did you know what this is she says oh yes this is a very precious note from the person I took over he says oh yes it's very precious but you don't honor this man or his note by putting it in a frame on the wall he says the way you honor the man is that if you will take this note and not put it in a frame but go get a lawyer go to the bank and you will cash the inheritance out for your life I wonder how many times we as Christians live like that too how many times Jesus put it in his testament called the Bible the will and he left us those things and we read it polish it memorize it but many times that's all that we do but not act on it and say Lord you said it it settles it and I will not live beyond what this word has promised to my life